Hey, welcome again, and thank you for joining me on my learning block. Um, today, math mountains, right? Or addition mountains, or subtraction mountains, whatever you call it, whatever your child calls it, you notice they've been bringing these things home. And you need help helping your child understand how to use them, right? You're at the right place. All right, so math mountains or the triangle, however you want to decide to call it. Uh, they're tools for teaching addition and subtraction, especially with an unknown number or an unknown quantity. Uh, it's very good. I like the strategy. I like the tools, really common core-ish. And it's fun because they really work and they help children understand it. My daughter really loves doing her math mountains. She uses very large numbers sometimes. And I have to tell her to calm down on her mountains or she may fall off them. Okay, I know. Bad joke. Get to, get to the work. All right. So math mountains. Before we start talking about what they are, let's first tell you what they are not. Again, they're tools for finding unknown numbers. All right. Back in the day, I know you remember this, when we were using addition, you know, people like us, the older people, um, we saw numbers like, let's say six plus three equals nine, right? That was the algorithm. And then we do some fun thing to show a picture. How do you know? We'd go one, two, three, four, five, six, plus one, two, three. Then we count them all up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? That's another video. Okay, okay. I know I'm being uh, contradictory here, but this is another strategy of adding, right? This works fine perfectly, but it is not a math mountain. I'm sorry, the X is not working. All right, it's not a math mountain. Math mountains are something completely different. Math mountains will look a little like this. Ah, yeah, I know. That was pretty cool. Um, tough crowd. All right. So yes, math mountains, they are used in finding an unknown number. Dun, dun, dun. All right. But how, how, how do you want to go about using them? Well, let's say for instance, we had that same problem. Six plus three. I'll put it up here. Six plus three. Well, what you're going to come up with, and I hope I'm not getting ahead of myself is up here will be your total amount, or it will be the amount that is equal to, right? It'll be the largest number in the fact family. So I'll just go ahead and say six plus three equals nine. Since we all know this, when you're helping your child, you want them to understand that this is the total. All right. This number right here is, and for the sake of it, you can tell your child it's a smaller number because it really is a smaller number, but in reality it is an add in. All right. Or subtrahend, depending on what you're using. It, it's a smaller number. Let's just use that term because we're not trying to confuse children. We're trying to get them to add and subtract. Right? So you have two smaller numbers and they will equal to this larger number or the total amount. All right. Um, and so in this situation, we have six here, three here. Those are my two smaller numbers and nine at the top. But how do you get there? How do you get there? That's what your child wants to know. How do you get there? We understand this concept, but how does your child understand it? Well, how about a addition sentence? Ah, I love them. All right, so we have an addition sentence, and this sentence says, once I finish clicking, James has four soccer balls. Sarah has three baseballs. How many balls do James and Sarah have together? All right, well, down here we'll do James's number of balls, which are four, and then over here we'll do Sarah's number, which is three, and then we're trying to find out how many balls do James and Sarah have together? All right. The way you work these addition sentences right here, your child can see four and three. All right. Now, how many do they have together? Together tells them that they are going to add what your child is going to do is they're going to take this number here on one side, on either side of the math mountain, and they're going to climb up the mountain using that number. Now, whatever number they stop will be the total 
Watch how this works. So we have four and four balls from James and now Sarah has an additional three. So we're gonna add up three. We're gonna climb the mountain three and I'll make circles, but your child can use any figure they want in order to get to the top of this mountain. I'll use circles. So I'll go four and I'll draw three circles. One, two, three. Now then you just count to add up the mountain, right? So I have four here five, six, seven. So the number at the top of the mountain will be seven because four plus three is seven. Four, five, six, seven. Therefore my answer or my total is seven. Now again, if your child wants to check, then they should be able to take this number here and make circles or objects coming down the mountain. And if that number equals this number here, which is my three in this instance, it's right. So it gives your child a chance to check their work while doing their work. And it's kind of fun sometimes. All right, so I need the number four, one, two, three, four. So seven, six, five, four, three. This number is the same as this number. Therefore, this answer is right. Thank you. I, I, I love doing that. I, I just do. Um, so that's using a math mountain to add. How do we use them to subtract? I'm glad you asked. Or this can also be adding in a sense, but we're finding the unknown number. So again, we have another problem that I will read once my pen starts working. And the problem is sub, uh, subtraction. Chris has 12 beads. Good for Chris. Five of his beads are green. The rest of his beads are red. How many red beads does Chris have? Well, your child's at a point where they're, I don't know. They didn't say, right? Yes, it does, but you have to figure it out. So down here, we're gonna do, these will be Chris's beads and they're going to be green. And we already know that. And that answer is five, as it says, five of his beads are green. And then your total number. Now this is a part where students may have a difficult time with understanding this. You say, well, if you put the red beads with the green beads, do you get 12 beads? And then see if your child can figure that out. If they can, great. If they can't, then help them understand or encourage them to understand. And this is a chance where you can actually use those manipulatives. If you have beads, that's fine. If you don't, you can cut off pieces of paper, you know, and you can have 12 total and then say, well, these five are red. We have to find out how many these are. And they'll say, oh, okay. So 12 is the total. So 12 is at the top. All right. Now in this sense, what we're going to do, because we're trying to find the unknown number is we're going to count. And again, I'm going to use those circles count coming up the mountain. And that answer should give us whatever should go here. So let's try it. If we have five, we're just going to count up, um, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. All right, so we're at 12. So however many circles we see here up this mountain should be the number here. Let's find out. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I count seven. So I'm gonna put seven here. And that's what your child should come up with. They should say, all right, there's seven. So they're gonna put the number here. Now it's time to check, to check our equation or our problem. Um, and the way we check again, we count backwards going down and we're going to use this number going down and it should equal seven. Let's find out. So 12, we're going to do five circles. One, two, three, four, five, 12, 11, 10, nine, eight, seven. That is the same number. Therefore it works. So 12 minus five, five for those of you that need to see it does equal seven all right so it works math mountains great way for your child to find an unknown number all right or it's great for them to use for addition and subtraction and to check their work at the same time yes Yes. Thank you again for joining me on my learning block. I hope you really enjoy using these with your child. 
keep learning with us and I'll see you next time.